Hi, my name is Tyler Reese. Um, I'm an honor student here at UConn. I'm a junior. Um, I'm a math major. Um, and I research um, essentially the fractal properties of the brain, um, specifically in the nematode um, C. elegans. Um, I did this research as a part of an REU here at UConn under the direction of Dr. Alexander Tepliev, um, and I received my support um, through the SURF grant program. Um, basically, we met for approximately 12 weeks over the summer, um, and we were looking for fractal properties of the neural network in this nematode. Um, fractals in a nutshell, um, you see lots of really cool shapes and, and patterns which are fractals. Um, they're essentially geometric patterns which exhibit self-similarity. So this here is one of the classic examples of a fractal, it's called the Sierpinski gasket. Um, it's a, a set of triangles, and if you take a, one subset of it, um, the small subset resembles the whole object. Um, and, and mathematically, these, these objects are very interesting. Um, they possess interesting electronic properties um, in terms of uh, signal sending, etc. Um, so we sort of saw a, a natural extension to the biological realm, specifically in the brain. Um, so actually, um, someone, our advisor, Alexander Tepley, of new from undergraduate work in his college, recently completed a, a complete map of the C. elegans brain. Um, so that's what we chose to study. Um, this here is our schematic of the brain. Um, basically, it's, it's 309 neurons, and we looked at it simply as a network. So in the brain, you have different signal sending processes, you have different types of cells. We sort of stripped away all those details and looked at it just as a framework because it was really the connectivity that we were interested in looking for these fractal properties. Um, now, unfortunately, after the summer of research, uh, we could not definitively determine these fractal properties simply because of the size of the brain. Uh, the C. elegans brain is 309 neurons, um, whereas really to get a good picture of a fractal itself, such as the Spensky gasket, you really need at least 5,000 or so points. So this was more of a, a proof of concept where we assembled an analytical toolbox of, of different tests which could be used to test um, neural networks for excuse me, to test neural networks for self-similarity as more and more complex brains have become well understood. Um, however, despite not being able to explain fractal or not fractal about this brain, we did discover some things about it. Um, it's clearly very highly organized. Um, when, we, when we looked at these schematics, there's very clear um, groupings of cells, much as you would expect in the brain. And we also found that it is a small world network, um, which is very significant. A small world network is very similar to the process of, you know, one of my friends is also a common friend. Um, it's the process of when a network that uh, the neighboring nodes in the network are also connected to each other. Um, so in a small world network, there's very much there's high levels of clustering, is what we refer to it as. Um, so at, at, the, at the end of this project, um, we have many places we'd obviously like to go with it. Um, I worked with two other st students, one from here at UConn and one from Boston University as a part of, a, part of this RU. Uh, but my personal funding was provided by the, the Surf Grant program, specifically the Roger Turney Award. Um, I had a chance to meet Roger uh, last fall, and it, it was really wonderful because he came back and he talked about how much he loved the university and, and doing his work here and how much it has meant to him. And I, I can really see, see where that comes from because this is, this is not a program I probably would have participated in without the Surf Grant program. I, I heard about it through my advisor, um, and he said, hey, this is, this is a really great program. Um, why don't you try it? So, I looked into it and it turns out to get funding, it was through the surf camp program and thankfully I was, I was one of the lucky ones to be awarded and it gave me this, this opportunity to do really my first research um, in, in interdisciplinary fields which is really important to me because I actually started college as a biology major um, after planning to apply as a music major and now I'm a math major. Um, so it was really great to have the summer to be able to work through mathematically rigorous work but in the biological realm it was really great to connect those two subjects.